Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Bookstack on Portainer. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So... Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what will be installed today, simple and free wiki software. Bookstack is a simple, self-hosted, easy to use platform for organizing and storing information. This is what it looks like. And it's free and open source, easy, simple interface, searchable and connected, configurable, simple requirements built-in di diagrams, multilingual, optional markdown editor, integrated authentication, powerful features, multi-factor authentication, dark and light mode. So that's what will be installed. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to scroll down to how to install Bookstack on Portainer right here. And then I'm going to go into Docker Compose. So ver version 2 of Docker Compose is being used. I'm going to set the services, and then the two services are the Bookstack and the Bookstack DB. Um, now, the image is coming off Linux server because of the URL right here, and um, this is their own registry. Um, and, and the Linux server Bookstack is the Docker image. It's using the latest tag by default. The container name's Bookstack. The, the environment variables, so the user ID for the process, the group ID for the process, the app URL, and this does need to be changed to your IP of your portainer. And then now um, it's going to come down here and it's going to set the DB cred uh, credentials. So this, uh, this is going to align with these down here. And... Um, the DB host is Bookstack DB, and that aligns with the service name right here. And we can use the service name because we've set a network, a bridge network for Bookstack network down here. So um, now, now once we get the D a DB credentials over here, we're going to come down here to app default dark mode. So that means that we're going to enable dark mode by default. It's going to set a volume, so Bookstack config, and then config on the container. The, the left side is a local volume on the host. Um, so now it's going to set ports, so 68, set 75, and that's on the host side. And then on the container side is 80. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change this to another port, but you'd have to update the app URL right here too. Um... So I'm going to set a restart policy so it's unless stop. So that means if you stop it for a reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. I'm going to set it depends on because it's depending on the book stack DB um, because of this, because it needs to store the data in the database. Um, so it's going to set a network. So book stack network down here. It's going to set this container inside of the book stack network. Um, so I'm going to come down here to the service definition of the Bookstack DB now. And then it's going to set an image and it's off Linux server. They're, they're on registry. Linux server of MariaDB. And it's using the latest tag. The container name is going to be called Bookstack DB. And then the, the environment variables are the password, the root password, the MySQL database, the MySQL user, and the MySQL password. These should align with these up here so that this container can connect to this DB. So um, now it's going to set a volume. So book stack DB data. This is on the host side and it's the local volume. And then var lib mysql. That's on the container side. And then it's going to come down here for restart policy. So unless stops, that means if you stop it from a reason, it will not to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. Um, so it's going to set this container right here inside of the book stack network. And this makes it to where these two containers can talk to each other with the service name. And, and now it's going to uh, 
a to set the bookstack config and the bookstack db da data and it's going to use the driver lo local so this is the local volume and then now it's going to define the network so bookstack network and then driver is bridge so i'm going to come up here to copy raw file and i'm going to copy it then i'm going to go over to portainer and get this installed so i wanted to let you know uh, about the big bear club uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So, now I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go into local, and then stacks, and then I'm going to add stack up here. And then I'm going to name this stack, uh, book stack, and stack. And then now this uh, this stacks this portainer stacks are using Docker Compose underneath. So I'm going to go down here to the web editor. I'm going to paste it in, and then it should be good to go. So I'm going to deploy the stack now. So now it has been deployed and it should be successfully running. So I'm going to go over the stack options now. So I'm going to go on the local and then stack and then book stack. And then now you can see some options up here. So stop this stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack, stack duplication. You can see the containers down here, the access control. And then you can also go in the editor over here and you can um, see the Docker compose. And now you can change some things in there and, and press update the stack if you want to. Now, uh, if you were wanting to update the current tag it's on, you can repull the image and redeploy. So you can turn that on or off. And um, so that, that's a little bit about the stack options in Portainer. So now I'm gonna go over the container options. So I'm gonna go into local and then stack and then uh, the book stack. And then now I'm gonna scroll down to containers right here. And you can see it's ru ru running um, you can see a container status up here. You can see actions. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate, slash, edit. And then access control, the create image, the container details, and the port. So 6875 and then to 80 in the container. Um, you can see the environment variables. You can see the labels right here and the volumes that are set in the connected networks. And it's the same thing for the other container, the container status, the actions, the access control, the create image, the container details, and the labels, and the restart policy. So you can change it here and then update. You can see the volumes. And then you can also see the uh, a network so that's a little bit about the container options. So now before we can go to the UI, I'm going to need to update the app URL environment variable. So I'm gonna go into local, then stack, and then book stack, and then the editor right here. And now you'll see this app URL. I'm going to paste in my IP address for my portainer. And then um, that should be good. So now I'm going to scroll down to update the stack. And then now I'm going to update. So this can take a little bit. And then now it's successfully done. So if you go into the container now, you scroll down and you should see it changed right here in the app URL. So we got it done. So now we're going to go in the UI. So you're going to go to your portainer's IP address and 6875 for the port. I'm going to return or enter. Now you can log in with the default credentials admin at admin.com and then now the password is password so now i'm going to log in so we're greeted with recently viewed re recently updated pages and recent activity you can see your shelves and you can cr create a new one um, you can see your books you can create a new one of those and then you can go up to settings and then you can see features and security, public access, higher security image uploads, a disable comments. You can go into the customization and change the application name, the, the default page editor, 
a WYSIWYG or Markdown, the application logo, you can upload one, and then you can change the application's a color scheme. The application homepage can be default, book, shelf, specific page. You can add a footer link or a custom HTML head content right here and then press save changes. You can also go in the registration. You can enable re registration and then you can set a domain restriction, uh, email confirmation, and then save changes. You can go into maintenance and you can clear the recycle bin, clean up the images, you can send a test email, re regenerate re references right here. You can see an audit log of what's happening. You can see the users, the roles, and you can set a, create a webhook. It's pretty neat. Um, you can go over here to my favorites. Once you have favorites in there, you can view your profile. You can go to my account and you can change your name, your, your email, your, your user avatar, and your preferred la language. You can open up administrator options right here. You can go to access and security and change your password. Highly recommend that to change it from password to something else more secure. And uh, you can also change your email right here as well. Um, you can turn on multi-factor authentication. You can set up API tokens. The UI shortcuts, and then save shortcuts. Um, you can uh, set a notification pre pre preferences, a no notify upon changes to pages I own, and then from there on, so watched and ignored uh, 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 items. And then once you change this, you can just save preferences. And um, so you can come up here and you can search and then there you go. Then you have more options over here for advanced options. Um, so you can go here and create a book. I'm going to create a testing book. Save book. And then now we have a testing book and a recent activity. You can go over here and press the, te the testing. And then it found the testing book. You can also uh, create a shelf. So a testing shelf. Um, uh, so you can also uh, drag drag a book over to this shelf, books on the shelf, and then and now you can save, and then and now you have a shelf, and now you have books in the shelf. You can change the sorting. You can create a new book, a list view, and then you can edit this. You can edit the per permissions, and then you can delete. You can fa favorite this shelf. And then now you can go over here to my favorites and you can see that you have a shelf as in your my favorites now. So that's a little bit about the UI in Bookstack. So I just went over step by step on getting Bookstack running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need a community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.